Good morning. My name is Katie Beth Lee, and I am the director of VCU Business Career Services. And I'll tell you all, this is my first time doing a Zoom webinar. So thank you for joining me. And um, I hope that you will find this helpful. Um, I want to start with a number of just kind of logistics and setting expectations. So this is the first of a three part series and you will not get everything you need to know today because we knew that there was just too much information to be able to share in one hour. And so we're gonna break this up into three parts and we're gonna to focus today specifically on what's happening in terms of job searching in the face of COVID-19 and then how you can set your strategy based on your goals, what's gonna be the most effective way to spend your time, who are the most effective employers to target, and how can you go about identifying those? So that's kind of where we're gonna go today. In our second week, we're going to focus more on your documents, so your resume, your cover letters, your online profiles, and making sure that those are really as strong as they can be to highlight what's gonna be most valuable to employers during this time. And then in our third week together, we're gonna to talk more specifically about interviewing. We'll definitely talk about the virtual interview space and also networking and what does that mean and how can you do that in this virtual environment? So only part one today, um, we are recording this webinar and it will be available on the School of Business YouTube channel later. So um, please be mindful of that. You are all muted. Um, you're welcome to keep your video on if you want. You don't need to. So if you'd rather turn it off, that's perfectly okay. Um, my colleague, Brian Rose, will be moderating the chat. So you can see him there. And so if you have any questions, please go ahead and send him a direct message in chat. So it's Brian, B-R-Y-A-N, Rose. And he will kind of flag me down if it's a question that we need to answer right away or he'll save them for the end. So we will save some time at the end for questions. So no, if we don't get to your question right away, he's probably holding them, um, but we see them and we definitely want to address them. Um, any other logistics? Okay, I think those are the main logistics. I will tell you all that I find this very strange because normally when I teach or present to people, I can see them and I can interact with them. And so it feels a little disembodied here, but um, thank you to those of you who are on your screens and you can at least like smile and wave at me or give me mystified looks if, if something doesn't quite make sense. All right, so as I talked about, just to advance, uh -oh. Hold on, got to get my slides going here. There we go. <clears throat> We're going to really talk about kind of the state of the job market right now. A concept called uh, the paradox of choice. And I'm going to suggest this is a little bit of a silver lining for job seekers. We're going to use some polls as we go to see where you are, what your interests are, and where it might be the best use of time for you to focus on your job search. Um, and we're gonna specifically talk about a strategy called creating a LAMP list. So I think, Brian, are you able to start the first poll? I'm not sure if I can do it while I'm sharing my screen. Let's see. I don't think I have. Okay. That. Let me see. Yes, is it the status check? Yes. All right, I will launch it. Thank you. So Brian is launching a quick poll. We just wanna know where are you right now? What best describes where you are in your job search? And we're gonna ask you to just choose one. I know that multiple of these may apply, but choose the one that is most applicable to you at this moment. Okay, we got a couple more people if you want to cast a vote. If not, Brian, you want to go ahead? Oh, there's another one. Okay. I'm going to go ahead and close the poll and show everybody where we're at. Okay, this is very helpful. So 
Um, we have people in a lot of different stages of their job search. Some people are still trying to figure out where they want to start, might not be able to find something that you want to apply to. Maybe you've applied to a lot of jobs and you haven't heard anything back, which can be really discouraging. We'll talk about some strategies for that. You've had some interviews, but you haven't moved forward to the final round. Some people have gotten to the final round, but they haven't received an offer um, and feeling really discouraged. And that is understandable. There's a ton of things changing and a lot that feels really unknown right now. And so one of the things that I, I really like about this strategy is it's based in the idea that sometimes you just need to shrink the change. And so there's a lot that's changing around us and we cannot control all of it, but there are certain things that are within our control. And so I'm gonna give you some really specific strategies to just try to take like teeny little bite-sized pieces. You can't do the whole job search today. You can't do it all in an hour, but there are things that you could do today when we finish this webinar. All right, thank you, Brian. We can take the poll down. Awesome. And let's see. Can I close it? Is that, hopefully that doesn't mess it up. Okay, all right. <clears throat> So let's talk a little bit about the what employers are thinking. So this is based on a survey conducted by Handshake. And I know many of you are probably familiar with Handshake, but in case you're not, um, Handshake is the main database that VCU uses to share job opportunities with students and alumni. Handshake is used nationally by a lot of schools and it's really friendly to employers because they can post a job to multiple schools at one time. So there are a lot of employers who regularly engage with Handshake and Handshake conducted this survey last month in March asking employers what are they doing now based on all of these things and how has that impacted their recruiting. So you can see here that all these things are changing in my screen. Uh, about half of them are still figuring it out, very much like many of us. We're like, what does this mean for us? We're not really sure. Almost a quarter of them made no changes to their hiring plans. And then the other quarter were kind of a mix. 4% of them were hiring more and less than 10% were hiring fewer. You'll see another 10% were doing things like temporary hiring freezes. They were delaying start dates or maybe pausing interviews. So. Some employers just aren't quite sure yet. And so it means that it may take a little bit longer to go through a process, but the good news is that only 10% on here said they're hiring fewer at this point. The other thing that's really important to keep in mind is that different industries have been impacted differently in this crisis. So obviously, and I think many of you are probably aware of this, hospitality, food and beverage, and arts and entertainment have been really impacted. Um, retail, certainly anything where it's kind of a face-to-face, -face, not online, that's been very impacted for the moment. But there are other industries that, that have been less impacted. Obviously, pharmaceutical, that makes sense. They're working their butts off to try to create a, a vaccine, right? And everybody still needs medicine. Healthcare clearly is, is very being utilized, although it kind of depends on if it's hospitals or outpatient. Um, nonprofits are somewhat, um, they're, they're staying stronger because many of them are providing these sort of essential services and front-facing services. So I wanted to do a quick check of you all to ask you, what industries are you most interested in? So Brian, that's the second poll, if you're able to get to it. And I have a list here of the 10 industries that I thought were most likely to be um, of interest to you as, as business students. Um, and I believe you should be able to select up to three if I did this right. So if you wanna go in and pick which industries are you most interested in at this point that in which you would most like to work. I think that's everyone who's a student. That looks good. All right, if you want to, can you end it? Can I end it? Awesome. Cool. All right, so you all should be able to see this now. 
And that makes a lot of sense. So um, a good chunk interested in professional and business services, in finance and insurance, some other big chunks in information, in state and local government. Um, we've got some education and then a couple of others. So, you know, thinking about these, the good news is that, uh, you know, professional business services still is certainly hiring in some places, in some ways. So, you know, that is something that we can continue to talk about. Finance and insurance, we want to think a little bit strategically. So, um, one thing that I think is really important to think about is that some of these, and we're going to talk a little bit about this, but some of these industries and types of roles have really structured hiring timelines. And so finance is one of the ones that comes to mind. Accounting would be included within accounting and business services. And they do a lot of their hiring in the fall. And so if you're interested in something like investment banking or, you know, some sort of entry level financial analyst role at like a fortune 500 company, the likelihood that they're hiring for full time roles to do that right now are very small and it actually has nothing to do with COVID. It's because they did all of their hiring in the fall. And unless something really crazy has happened, they've already filled all their spots. But that doesn't mean there aren't other kinds of roles in other companies. And we're going to talk about how to kind of broaden your um, horizons a little bit and find some of these companies that maybe other people haven't found yet. Um, other ones, state and local government, you know, they are, are going to have a lot of budget problems. And so if that's a in target interest area for you, you might have to think really strategically about who's going to be able to maintain funding right now because their tax base has been severely impacted. And so a lot of them are having to go in and make some pretty severe budget cuts and hiring freezes and things like that. So you need to start thinking strategically about your industries and if you need to pivot at all. Because some of these are going to be fine and they're going to be great targets and some information. Obviously, that one is really hot. Like they, we need people in information security um, more so than ever. And so, uh, you know, depending on what you want to do with an information, you probably still have a lot of options. Uh, but if you're interested in something like state and local government, you might need to really think about a second strategy, a second tiered strategy. All right. So. Good news is people are still hiring. And so there's this really great resource and I, I will send these slides out afterwards so you'll have all these links. But um, there's a gentleman who has this website Candor and he started a live, it's kind of like a Wikipedia, like it's crowdsourced, but it's a live tool that is documenting who's hiring, who has hiring freezes, who's doing layoffs and he has a ton of companies on this list. So when I pulled up this list a couple days ago, there were nearly 3,500 companies on this list that people have gone in in the last month to say, we are hiring. So the good news is that there are companies hiring, but you need to figure out who they are. So this is a really good tool. The downside is you can't do a geographic search on this. So for instance, if you're really looking to work in Northern Virginia or you really wanna look in Richmond, you won't be able to just search this by geographic area, but we're going to talk about creating a very specific list of employers. And once you have your list, you could come back to this and look each of them up and, and see, have people reported, are they hiring? Are they on hiring freeze? Do they have layoffs? Because that will inform how much time you want to spend on those employers. So this is a really great and helpful tool. Additionally, and I kind of mentioned this at the beginning, Interviewing is moving fully virtual and that should be kind of obvious because, well, we're not really supposed to be together. And so the good news is there's a lot of tools already available. Um, the majority of employers are using virtual interviews. Um, they're even doing, sometimes they're doing a phone, phone screen is like a phone call. So it might be video, it might be phone. And they're engaging a lot more on virtual platforms because in the past they might host an in-person event where it might be like a networking event or something like a career fair, but they can't do that. And so we've had calls with employers in the last month where they say, we still wanna engage students right now. The Richmond Federal Reserve, we wanna engage students right now. We are interested in getting connected. How can we do that in the virtual environment? So I know we're all spending like a ton of time on our screens and you might be a little tired of the virtual environment, but 
if you are job searching, the good news is the employers are there and they're looking to find you. So a couple of things to think about. I mentioned Handshake before. So Handshake has the ability for employers and students to interact with each other directly in the platform. And Handshake ran some numbers about employers reaching out to candidates within the Handshake platform. And you can see that it's continued to increase. They had something like, I wanna say it was like 125% increase since last year uh, at the same time of employers reaching out within the virtual environment. And one of the things that I think should be encouraging to you all is that the top five majors that are receiving outreach include business, computer science, finance. You know, I say computer science, but I think information systems would be kind of in this bucket also, because a lot of times when we see employers post, sometimes they will post computer science and IS together. Um, so business students are in demand and employers are still looking for talented business students. You can see here the top five industries that are doing this kind of virtual outreach, not surprising internet and software. So they're probably a little more comfortable in the virtual environment, but we've got investment portfolio management consulting. They're still reaching out to students using a virtual environment. So I think that that's something that's important for you to know. And when we get to week three, we're going to be talking more specifically about how you engage in the virtual environment. But if you want to get a jump start, I would highly recommend that you make sure you completed your handshake profile. And by completed, I mean you should have a picture and you should have your experiences on there. We'll talk more about that. You should have your skills on there. And the same thing for LinkedIn, because what employers are doing is they do these searches in handshake and in LinkedIn and they say, I need someone with these skills. And they're able to go into that platform and say, show me people who meet these criteria. And if you have those skills that they're looking for, you're going to pop up in their search and they might reach out to you before you've even reached out to them. So make sure that you're available and you have a good online presence, just like you wouldn't go to a networking event wearing like, you know, probably what you're wearing today, your bedroom slippers and your yoga pants. Um, your online presence also needs to look and be ready to be professional and engage with the employers in this virtual environment. We'll talk a lot more about that in the week in week three, but I wanted you to know that employers are still looking for you. And specifically at VCU, this is data I pulled out of Handshake this week, and these are companies that have active jobs posted for VCU students in Handshake right now. And you'll see, I'm not talking about like one here, one there. I mean, 33 jobs, 27 jobs, 21 jobs. So they're still recruiting at scale. Now, you probably look down this list and you probably don't know most of the companies on this list, right? Because they're not necessarily your Fortune 100 like name brand companies. And we're going to talk about why you really need to learn how to differentiate your job search beyond them. And Procter & Gamble, that's a good one. We probably all know they still are definitely recruiting. Um, but a lot of these you may not have heard of before. And so how do you decide if that's a good fit for you or if it's worth applying? The other thing that I think is really important as you kind of consider how much effort you make versus how much impact that will have is that the majority of students are still searching. So this isn't just you. So according to this handshake survey, which was national, so it's not just VCU students, it's students across the country, 73% of college seniors, that's three out of four college seniors are searching for full-time jobs. So you are in good company. <laughs> um, you know, a third were already working to find a job online and everybody else is like, well, I guess I better do that now, which is true. Um, but the other thing that I think is particularly interesting, um, this is from an interview with the CEO of Snag a Job. And Snag a Job is a company that's headquartered in Richmond and they're one of the largest online boards for, part, for hourly work. Um, they, so they have this huge job database and they said that they had 8,500 jobs available on their site 300 of which were urgently hiring, like we need people right now. And they found that 50, there's been a 50% decline in the number of people looking for work, just on Google, not just on their site. So less people are actually looking for work while employers are still hiring. 
So this actually is good for you because it means you have less competition. And, you know, in some ways, I think I've, I've heard a lot of people talk about all these unemployment benefits and how some people are like, well, I'll be better off just taking my unemployment benefits rather than looking for work. Um, but students are not often eligible for the unemployment benefits because you haven't been laid off necessarily, right? You have been finishing your degree. But that's not necessarily a bad thing for you because now all these people who decided to just go on unemployment and they're not even looking for work are no longer your competition. So there is work out there. That's the good news. Um, you just have to actually apply to stuff. So we're going to talk, we're going to kind of pivot and think about how do you even know what to apply for? And I want to introduce this concept of the paradox of choice. It comes from a book by Barry Schwartz by the same name. And in the book, he gives this example of when there's too many choices. And so if you've ever been to the store, his example is jam. I always think about toothpaste. I mean, if you go to Kroger, there's like a whole aisle of toothpaste. Who needs a whole aisle of toothpaste? That is crazy. And it's paralyzing, right? And so in his research, what he found was that if you gave shoppers 24 choices of jam, only 3% of shoppers bought anything. Whereas if you gave shoppers six choices of jam, 30% of shoppers actually bought jam. And so you might be thinking, what does this have to do with my job search? Well, the reality is that mm, two months ago, we were at a nearly, nearly functionally zero unemployment. Employers were literally throwing themselves in front of students at career fairs, trying to find people to apply. And it was really overwhelming for students. How do you even know where to start? How do you even know what's worth applying to? How do you know what is a good fit? Well, your options have changed. And you know, I, I have tried to give you some good news, but the reality is we are probably headed for a recession. That is true. That doesn't mean there isn't anything out there. And in some ways it may mean that it's easier to make some choices because you know that there's only some industries that are still hiring and they're hiring for these kinds of roles. And so that's where you should put your energy and you no longer have unlimited Kroger toothpaste aisle choices. It's more like shopping at Aldi where they got like two kinds of toothpaste, but you know what? It works, it cleans your teeth. And so we're gonna think a little bit about, all right, when you have less choice, do you know this research actually says there's kind of this fine line, but sometimes you're even happier with less choices. So we want to help you figure out how to find the things that are good options for you. They're not unlimited, but unlimited choices actually don't make people happy. And so this is a little bit of the silver lining, I think. Now here's one other thing that we're going to talk about in our sort of reality check. If I was in like a real room with y'all, I'd ask you who likes flossing, and my guess is Nobody likes flossing. Who likes flossing their teeth, right? Uh, my husband and I like to argue about this actually, but job searching is a little bit like flossing. You don't have to like it, but you probably are going to like the results of doing it a lot more than the results of not doing it. And the other sort of reality check here is that part of job searching is rejection. It sucks. <laughs> But that's, that's just the name of the game and it's not personal. And I know it feels so personal and it hurts and it's discouraging and it's overwhelming and it's part of the game. And every single person that searches for a job experiences rejection. And it doesn't mean you're not a good candidate and it doesn't mean you're not gonna find a good job, but it does mean you have to be persistent and you have to be strategic and you cannot put all of your eggs in one basket. And so we're gonna talk a little bit about a strategy where you can diversify your options so you don't just apply to like your one job that you think is perfect and you wait and you wait and you wait and then you get rejected and you're completely deflated and you don't even know where to go next. That's not a good job search strategy because I hate to break it to y'all, but there is no perfect job, it just doesn't exist. And so we're gonna talk a little bit more about how do you decide when it's worth it for you because you need to admit to yourself there's no perfect job, Sometimes you will be rejected and you're a great candidate for someone. And so we need to figure out who that is and get you connected to them. So I wanna do a little bit of a pulse check here. So I think I asked you at the beginning kind of where you are in your job search. And one thing that I think is really important is to be realistic with yourself and run kind of, I call it a diagnostic. 
So ask yourself, is there a stuck point in your job search? And if there's a stuck point, is there something you can be doing about it? So this is just a little image that I like of the kind of the general um, process once you put it in an application. And the reality is that that you have to actually put in an application to get into any of these next steps. So some of you may be in the place of like, you just haven't applied enough stuff yet. And that's, that's a stuck point. And then there's a different strategy for that. But Brian, if you could put up the next poll, ask yourself, where are you stuck? What do you think it is that you need some additional help, focus, energy, resources around? All right, this is good. I think we have everyone, Brian. Yeah, yeah. Thank you, everyone. So this is really helpful. And I think the reason that this is an important thing to do, and I would encourage you to do this along your process, is because there are different strategies depending on where you're stuck. So if you don't know what to apply to, that's that's something that you should be talking to your career coach about. <laughs> your career coach can sit down with you virtually and talk to you about what are your strengths, what are your interests, what are you motivated by, what are some of your sort of realities that maybe constrain your search, and what does that mean for the current indus industry situation, and what then makes most sense. If you haven't applied enough, okay, we can, we can fix that problem, but we need help you find other things to apply to. Maybe you haven't applied strategically. This happens a lot. The temptation online is just to like click submit, submit, submit on all these resumes. And like, you may or may not actually be interested in those things. And that actually comes across in the process. And, and in week two, we'll talk more about that. Your applications are not yielding interviews. So this is a different problem. This either means that your resume doesn't highlight strengths relevant to that job, or maybe you just don't have the skills that they're looking for. And so if you're not even getting to the interview stage, it means you need to do a serious diagnostic on your documents and if they're a good match for the kinds of jobs you're applying for. And then if your interviews are not yielding offers, you probably need to do some interview practice and you need to have a coach work with you and give you more direct feedback on, are you not highlighting certain experiences or strengths well? Um, maybe there's just some fine tuning that you can do that would convey you as more valuable asset to the employer. So those are all different places to focus your energy. So I would encourage you as we go through this, I know you're not all in the same place, do this diagnostic test and ask yourself, where do you need to really focus your energy? So today we're gonna focus on this effort versus impact. Who should you actually apply to and how do you find them? So I mentioned to you all that you probably uh, didn't recognize a lot of those companies on that list that I shared with you. Companies that have over 100 employees only account for about a quarter of the employment in the US. And those are mostly companies that you've heard of. But the reality is that these smaller companies that have between two and 99 employees represent two thirds of all US jobs. And you probably have never heard of those companies. Probably you need to be applying to those companies because those have more jobs and less competition. And the reality is that job searching does take work. It takes time. It can be painful. It can be frustrating. But in some ways it's a rite of passage, but it also can be pretty strategic. And so you, I'm hoping that the strategy I teach you today, you'll find to be useful because you can really wrap your hands around it and you know exactly what you need to be doing instead of just looking at Indeed and being like, where do I even start? The other thing that I wanna acknowledge is that some of you have classmates who went through sort of a structured recruiting process in the fall and maybe got jobs from that, but that's not happening now. Fall is over. And so you're gonna to have to use different strategies than your classmates used in the fall because it's a different type of recruiting that happens off cycle. And then the last thing I'm gonna mention here is that you are far more likely to move forward when you have an internal referral. And I'm not gonna get into it now, we're gonna talk about it in week three, 
But the reality is if somebody is looking through a stack of resumes and they know five of them and they don't know 95 of them, the five that they know are going to move to the top. And so we're going to talk a little bit about how do you get yourself known. And it doesn't mean that you have to have friends who are CEOs. You are a VCU student or alum, and there's so many VCU alumni all over the world who are looking for VCU RAMs to come into their workplace. Don't allow perfect to be the enemy of the good. Like I said, there's no perfect job. Don't wait for a perfect job. Don't think you're gonna get a perfect job. You need to figure out the next right step, realizing that careers are iterative, which means they build on themselves. Maybe you get 50% of what you want in this next job, and that's okay, that's pretty good. It's not gonna be your only job ever. The next one, maybe you get to 60%. Maybe in the next one, you get to 75, and you keep working toward your goals, knowing that it's never gonna be perfect, but that doesn't make it not good. So here's the much awaited strategy that I've been promising you. Um, this is called creating a lamp list. And it's from a book by Steve Dalton called The Two Hour Job Search. When I send you these slides, I put a little link in here that is like a 40 slide overview that summarizes the whole book. I'm only giving you bits and pieces that I think will be useful. But this strategy will take you 70 minutes. That's one hour and 10 minutes. And I'm going to give you a warning. This is your homework for next week. So I'm going to ask you all to actually do this, to find 70 minutes between now and next Friday to try the strategy and see what it yields. Um, we're going to create a list of 40 employers. We're going to identify which employers you already have advocates or alumni at, because remember I told you if you have an internal referral, you're far more likely to move forward in the search. We're going to ask how motivated are you actually to apply to those, and are they actually hiring? So those are gonna be the four components of this list. I strongly recommend you use Excel or Google Sheets to make this list. I'm gonna show you some screenshots of what this might look like as we move forward. So I'm gonna get pretty tactical right now and kind of go through each of the steps of this process. You're welcome to take notes, but I will also send this out to you afterwards. So step one of this process, this is your first thing on your homework. You're gonna create a list of 40 employers and you're gonna do it like this. Remember, you only have 40 minutes to do this, okay? So that's on average one minute per employer. So for the first 10 employers on your list, pick them out of your brain. These are the employers that in your dream world you would work for. I really wanna work for VCU, I wanna work for Google, I wanna work for the State Department, whoever you wanna work for, make your list of 10. Next 10. I want you to go on VCU's alumni page, or if you're a graduate student, you can go on your undergrad alumni page and find 10 employers that have an alumni at them, alumna or alumnus at them. Um, and don't write down who they are. Don't even worry about what they do or where they work, but just find 10 employers that someone from VCU or one of your previous institutions actually works at. Step three, go on indeed.com. Do some general searches for what you're interested in, financial analyst, data scientist, marketing coordinator, um, in maybe your geographic region, uh, whether it's Northern Virginia or it's Richmond or it's somewhere else in the world, and pick 10 employers that pop up as like, hey, they actually have jobs. Don't write down what the job is, just put the name of the employer. You gotta go fast to do this. And then 10 that you pick up by following trends. So this could mean a variety of things. It might mean your favorite industry publication, fast company maybe you like to read, or maybe there's like some blogs that you follow or some Twitter feeds that you follow. It might be some of the resources I shared on who's hiring. You might do a Google search of who's hiring right now um, and do that as trend following, but find 10 more companies that are, are identified through kind of trend following. And most likely these are not gonna be the companies that you've heard of before. And that's kind of good actually. Now here's the crazy thing, don't research them yet, okay? If you have no idea what they do, that's fine. We'll get to that, I promise. But don't go down a rabbit hole because you only have 40 minutes. And set your timer, make yourself do this. So you know it's only gonna take me 40 minutes. Just get your list of 10, you put them down your first column in your spreadsheet. If you are an international student and you are hoping to be sponsored, 
There's two more links here that I'm sharing. These are employers who have sponsored recently. That's probably a better resource for you to find your 40. Okay, so find your 40 from people you know sponsor and make your list. So that's step one, that's your L, and your L is the first column in your spreadsheet. And here you get a little picture, okay? Step two, you only get 10 minutes to do this. So you're like blazing on this. So start with your own LinkedIn network or on the VCU alumni page, which I've linked here, and you just go in and you type the name of the company in the search feature. Is there an alum or someone in your LinkedIn network who works there? Yes or no? I don't care who they are. I don't care what they do. Don't write down their name. Just yes or no. Y or N in your column. And that's it. 10 minutes. So that's like 15 seconds a piece. You go fast. Because remember, this is going to be really important. If you have a contact inside the organization, you are so much more likely to move forward. All right, step five. You only get five minutes to do this. Hang on, I'm gonna cough, sorry. <coughs> you assign them a score using only the information that you know. If you have no idea what they do, that's fine. You give them a one. I have no idea what these people do. If they're on your dream list, they're, pro they're probably five, right? If it's a second tier choice, like I know something about them, they'd be okay, it's a four. A third tier choice is a three. Someone that you're like, Ugh, I don't know, like I'd really, I'd really twist my arm to work for them, that would be a two. So you assign them a score based on how motivated you are to actually pursue working for them. And this is so important. It's kind of crazy, it only takes five minutes. This is a really fast step right now, but Dalton, who wrote this book, has found that it's really the most important factor because the reality is you're not going to really do a good job applying anywhere that you're not motivated to apply. And so this is an important factor as we think about where's the most bang for your buck and how should you be strategic in your job search. And then the last step is like, are they actually hiring? So hopefully you have some sort of a generic search term that you might use, whether, like I said, financial analyst, data scientist, um, I said marketing coordinator, I'm thinking about who else is on here. Uh, whatever it is, use quotations for the, the type of job that you want to use and then the name of the employer. So, and if the employer has multiple words in it, put quotations around the employer separately and do an Indeed search. So just go on indeed.com, see if any jobs come up. If a job comes up that is related to your actual interest area, so for, for instance, financial analyst at the Fed, awesome. That employer, the Federal Reserve, gets, a, gets three points because there's a keyword posting. If, however, you get nothing when you do that, take out your keyword posting. So now just look for the Federal Reserve. And if the Federal Reserve has some jobs posted, they're just not like your interest area, they still get two points because we know that they're actually hiring somebody. And if there's no postings, they're really not hiring at all, they get one point, okay? So you only get 15 minutes. So again, you gotta go fast on this. You just go through Indeed, you type them each in, you got your search terms and you see how do they stack up in terms of postings and now, you have your list. So if you're in Excel, this is what, um, what a sort might look like. So we're going to actually sort this list based on some of these criteria and we're going to rank them because remember I told you that actually the biggest factor is how motivated you are. So that gets to be first. So we're going to select sort and we're going to choose first motivation and we're going to sort from largest to smallest. So we want things you're most motivated to apply to to be in the top of the list. Second, we're going to search by postings. Are they actually hiring? That would be good to know. Largest to smallest, the ones who are hiring for the functional areas in which you are interested, they rise to the top of the list with the strategy. And then third is going to be those alumni or advocates. Do you know someone? Do you have some potential to, to connect to somebody? Um, and we're going to reverse alphabetically sort so that our yeses come before our noes. Okay, and once you do that, you're going to apply that filter to your list. Now, 
you can stop there if you want, but there is one more step for the extra motivated amongst you. And that's to go back and actually do a little bit more digging. So when you look at this list, you could choose a filter and you can select the employers who scored a three on postings. And this will let you quickly see who is actually hiring for the kind of thing I want to do right now. And you might find that some of those people, some of those employers are employers that you weren't that motivated to apply for when you just looked at their company name. And you ask yourself, okay, knowing that they're actually hiring for what I want to do, does that change my motivation at all? And if it does, you can change your motivation score. So you kind of go through and you say, okay, for those who are actually hiring and they got three points for postings, do I want to adjust my motivation score with that information in mind? And then you undo that filter and you apply another filter and you select only those employers who received a one in motivation. And you may remember that a one meant you didn't know anything about them. And I told you don't Google them yet because we're going to get to that step. So that's, that's the step. So now you get one minute to Google them, just one. Because really all you need to know is generally what they do and where they're located or where they're at least hiring for. Do they have jobs in the area you wanna work? And if in that one minute you become maybe more motivated and you think, yeah, okay, this could be like a second tier, maybe even a first tier, you can change your motivation score, okay? And then, undo your, mo your filter and you go back and you do this sort again. So you sort by motivation, largest to smallest, postings, largest to smallest, alumni, Z to A. And now you have a target list of employers that are ranked in priority order. And you should start at number one. <laughs> And this is a really helpful tool to help you be strategic about using your time, your effort, your energy in places that are most likely to benefit you, where your odds are best. Because what you're trying to do is you're trying to increase your odds in this game. And so by being strategic about who's hiring in what you wanna do, who are you motivated to work for, and where might you be able to connect to an internal referral, your effort versus impact ratio, your return on investment is going to go up. And that's the name of our game. So here's what I want you all to do this week. I want you to make this list so you, can, you have at least 40 employers. And some of you might be overachievers and say, I wanna do more than that. Start with 40 and kind of see how it stacks up. And then if you find it useful and you're working through it and you have others that you wanna add, that's fine, you can absolutely do that. But start with 40, because remember, you only have 70 minutes, one hour and 10 minutes to go through this whole thing, right? And then, I told you when we did that sort of diagnostic check, the first step is to know even where to apply. But the second step is to know, are my documents communicating what I need them to communicate? Do the employers see that I have the skills and the strengths that they are seeking for these roles? And so primarily that's gonna happen in your resume, in your cover letter, and in your online profiles. So next week, we're gonna dig into that, but as a little bit of pre-work, I'm gonna ask you all to use a tool that we have now. It's a new resource called VMock. And VMock is uh, artificial intelligence applied to your resume. So um, this is a link here. Graduate students probably received an invitation yesterday. So it's only kind of preloaded for our undergraduate business students at this point, but we created special accounts for the graduate students. And you can go in here and you can upload your resume to this tool and it will give you very specific feedback. So it will say, you know, you use this word way too many times or you didn't use bullets here or maybe, um, you should have been more specific in the kind of headline that you used on your resume. It is specifically created. We have two templates in there, one for um, un undergraduate students, so first and second years, and then one that's more geared towards juniors and seniors. For those of you who are graduate students, I would suggest you use the upper class one, and you can just say you're a senior because it asks you your class year. But we know that it may not be 
everything you need it to be. And that will be part of our conversation next week. But this is a really good starting point because it gives you very specific feedback about ways you can improve and you can make those changes and resubmit and it gives you a score. So don't think of this as like the letter grade scale because it's a computer, it's really picky. So if you get a 70 out of 100 or above, we consider that to be a good resume. So 70 or above is good. You should feel happy about it. Um, if you get below a 70, I would suggest that you go and you dig in and you look at the specific feedback that VMOC gives you and see what tweaks and changes you can make. And you can certainly bring your questions next week to the webinar because we're going to talk about it, but that will be a really good starting point for you. And then the third piece of homework is to bring one current job posting that you want to apply for because we're gonna look specifically at how well your resume ties to that job posting. And hopefully it's a posting from one of the employers on your LAMP list. Okay, so that's kind of step two for next week. In the meantime, if you are a business student, you have actually paid to have free access, see how that works, to career coaches that are specifically for business students. And we have five career coaches who are conducting virtual appointments Monday through Friday, and they are happy to work with you. So if you have a lot of specific questions, particularly if on your diagnostic check, you found yourself in the, I don't know where to start, I'm feeling really discouraged, I haven't been very strategic, I don't know what to apply for, that is what your coach is there for. They're amazing people. They're really smart. They know a lot about the industry. Y'all can see Laura Bass in here. You see Brian Rose. Those are two of our coaches. If you go into Handshake, you can make an appointment there and they will work with you one-on-one -on -one to really drill into where you are and how you can turn your stuck point into action to move forward. Because like we said at the beginning, there are employers looking for you but you need to actually reach out and show them what you have to offer so that they can offer you a job. Next week, like I said, we're gonna talk about the job search documents. We're gonna be at the same link. At this point, this is a great time, Brian. I'm guessing we may have some questions. If you haven't submitted questions, this is a great time. So go ahead and submit your questions and Brian, tell us what we have. Uh, no questions as of yet. Um formal questions. There's somebody asking about the alumni page, but it was on there. Okay. But no formal questions. Well, and I can, what I'll do here, let's see, I'll show you. Um, I'll maybe show, show the alumni page. page, maybe. Yeah. As you're pulling that up, we have a question. Can non-business school students access the VMOC service? Um, at this point, no, but we can recommend that you work specifically with the career coaches in VCU career services, and they will customize, they'll work with you to customize your resume. So you can also go into Handshake, and when you go into Handshake, you won't, you will see the availability of um, VCU career services. Um, instead of business. So you still have resources, it's just not in business school. All right, here is a quick little screen share of the alumni page, which is a great question. I'm glad you asked that. And you can see that right now there are 130,000 alumni, uh, VCU alumni on this page. And this page is so cool because you can sort by all kinds of different things. So let's say that you want to work in Northern Virginia. We can narrow it down first to the DC area. And then let's say if you go to this next bar, we can say, we can ask what did they study? And let's say, okay, we want to see business. And then specifically, we can say show more. This is a great way to populate your lamp list, right? So if you're a management student, for instance, and um, you want to work in Northern Virginia, I might come right here for your alumni section and I might just go down this list. <laughs> Booz Allen, Capital One, Geico, Navy Federal Credit Union, Deloitte, CGI, General Dynamics, Fannie Mae, so on and so forth. So this is a great way to see like who's hiring. Now, of course, these are gonna be bigger employers just because they have a higher number. But for instance, if we click on Booz Allen Hamilton, this is a management consulting firm. We do a lot of government consulting. 
um, we can see a list of all these different VCU alumni who have some connection to Booz Allen Hamilton on LinkedIn. And you can see, uh, usually you can see their job title. Sometimes you can see like, here's a 2015 alum, 2016 alum, 2010 alum. You can see a little bit about what they're doing. We've got IS folks in here. We've got here a 2018 IS alum. Um, and we'll talk in the third week about what you should do about that. But for now, for your LAMP list, um, this is really helpful just to kind of identify where are people working in the Ge geographic areas you want to work or in the functional areas that you want to work. Does that answer the person's question, whoever asked it? No, that's great. That's perfect. Other questions? All right. Still waiting. Feel free to, feel free to keep submitting. I know it takes anybody with a question. Them. I've been on these webinars where they're like, okay, nobody has any questions. And I'm like, no, I'm typing, hold on. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so I will show you while you're typing or, or thinking, um, if you were just, if you didn't have the slides and you just wanted to find this page on your own, if you look up VCU in uh, the LinkedIn search, like if you were to look up Virginia Commonwealth, it comes up as a school and then on the left, you just want to find this little tab that says alumni. And so that's how you're going to get to that search feature. Um, later down in your LAMP list, when you do, when you go through your alumni, you could specifically search by a company here. So let's say that you wanted to search for like, I don't know, I'm just, I'm going to put in CapTech. And I expanded that, but like, here you go. Here's a list of alumni who work at CapTech. So when you're making your LAMP list, all you have to say is like, yes, because <laughs> there's a bunch. And when in week three, we go back and we talk a little bit more about networking and how you get these internal referrals, we'll drill into that. Um, but for now, you can see like, yes, absolutely, there are people here. We have a next question. Are we able to choose which career coach we want to schedule with? Oh, good question. Yes, you absolutely are. Um, and I'll, I'll give you another hot tip. If, you, if you're not really sure or you don't like the handshake interface or whatever, um, and you wanna call our office number, our office manager is answering it and she knows all the coaches and she knows their areas of expertise. And if you wanted to say to her, like, here's what I wanna talk about, who do you think would be best? She would absolutely connect you with the person that might best suit your needs. But I'll tell you that um, I would recommend if you have, like a, a resume, cover letter, kind of like a tactical question with your documents, I would recommend selecting Elizabeth Manley or Kyle. If you have more of like a strategy question or you know, you're, you're kind of deep in it and you are, you're trying to figure out more fine-tuned things about your industry, I would recommend Brian or Laura or Heather. And so those are all available to you. They have times at different times of day. The other thing I'll mention is that we are doing like ask me any, anything drop-in times. So on Tuesdays and Wednesdays, Brian, is that right? Mm -hmm. Between yep. one and two. And um, those are listed as events in Handshake. So you can see the Zoom link. But if you, know, you just wanted to pop in and ask a quick question and you didn't want to schedule a whole appointment, you could just pop in between one and two on Tuesday or Wednesday and Laura and Heather will be the people that you get to see in those. Good question. And there's no limit. And oh, the other thing that's really important is that we do serve alumni. So I know you've got a lot going on right now. You're trying to finish up these online classes and figure out where your stuff is and all this other stuff that really is, um, kind of emotionally draining. And so if you're still in your job search process after graduation, we are still here for you. And so we'll continue to work with you and serve you. Um, and you know, if you have friends who graduated a year or two ago and maybe they got laid off or something's going on, they can come back and work with us if they're business school alumni. Other questions that have popped up? None yet. Feel free right. to keep submitting the folks. If you guys have no more questions, um, you're welcome to hop off the line and we'll see you next week again. Um, and I'll send a reminder next Thursday, but um, your homework is to create your LAMP list, to submit your resume to VMOC, 
and then to find one posting that you want to apply to. Don't bring one you've already applied to yet. Bring one you haven't applied to yet. So you can make sure that you're really using that to tailor your documents. And likely next week, we'll do some breakout groups and work specifically with some of our coaches with more of your questions in person. So just be kind of prepared for that. Um, but this is a three-part series, so I hope you continue to join us because obviously we couldn't cover everything today. But this is the shrinking the change, giving you something to work on this week. It should only take you 70 minutes to make your lamp list. And then you have a strategic target list of where you're going to actually put your time and your energy. So thank you for joining us. And we look forward to seeing you next week. We'll stick on the line for a few minutes if there are other questions that pop up. Yeah, we had you, you touched it briefly, but um, even more specifically, after graduation, how long will we have access to business career services? So um, forever. <laughs> and one fine tuned thing, I know there are a couple of people on the line who are not in the School of Business. VCU Career Services, which is the central office, does serve alumni up to one year after graduation. So you can continue to work with VCU Career Services up to one year, but once you've been graduated for a year, um, only their online you know, resources are available, but their coaching is no longer available to you. Good question. Yes. All right. Have a wonderful Friday. Go enjoy some sunshine. And uh, we'll see you back here next week. Thank you all. Reading some thank yous. Thanks, everybody.